Hey guys, this is Elliot the iPad Pro, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a video game from scratch in 15 minutes. I'll also show how you can use some basic machine learning to build an AI in a video game. This is the last video in a four video playlist that takes you from zero coding knowledge to building your own video game. You can find the playlist by going to my home screen. Then, if you go to Playlists, you'll see a playlist called Make a Video Game Beginner's Tutorial. Click that to see all four videos. The last video will be the one that you're watching right now. Watching all four videos will take you about one hour to do. But in that time, you'll learn how to install the software, do basic programming in Python, and then build a video game. The coolest part is that you can do this on any device. I use an iPad, but you can do this on Mac or Windows or Android or even the Amazon Fire tablet. In the first video, I show you programming on a phone. Okay, so let's see the video game that we're going to build now. The game we're going to build is called Mind Reader. And you can basically think of it as being like rock, paper, scissors, but binary. And by that, I mean instead of having three options like rock, paper, scissors, you have two options, zero and one. So you first pick a number. Let's say you pick zero. The bot then uses artificial intelligence to try and guess which number you picked. If the bot also guesses zero, then it gets a point. But if the bot guesses one, then you get a point. The first person to get 50 points wins the game. So here you can see me make a few moves and notice that my score is going up, but the bot predicted my last move and I lost the game. Okay, so how did I actually build this thing? Well, starting from the IO home screen, the first thing we do is go into public. Then we create a new folder. Let's rename this folder that we created Mind Reader Game. Now let's go into Mind Reader Game and create a new Python 3 notebook. Let's rename this notebook Embed. In this notebook, we are going to create the source code for the Mind Reader Game. Since we already explained how the game works, let's just jump right into writing the code. Whenever you start a new project, Usually the first thing you do is import the toolboxes or Python packages that you need to build your application. For our video game, you only need to import two Python packages, IPy widgets and another package called NumPy. Remember from before that IPy widgets is the easiest way to build applications in Python. Also, since our bot is going to be using machine learning, we'll import a really popular data science package called NumPy. Let's start by creating the button widgets that were used earlier to select either 0 or 1. To do this, we create two buttons. Button 0 has the description 0, and button 1 shows the 1. We put these two buttons inside an H box so that we can present them on one row. Each time that the user clicks these buttons, it updates the game. So let's create a function called update game. Now we're going to say that when the user clicks the button 0, we're going to run the update game function with the value 0. We're also going to do the same thing with the 1 button. So if we try clicking the buttons right now, we'll get an error because this function update game doesn't exist yet. Let's create the function update game. For the moment, the function doesn't actually do anything, but we create it so that when we rerun the cells, they don't cause any errors when we click the buttons. We'll come back to update game and fill it in later. Okay, now that we have the button widgets, let's try creating the scoreboard for the user and the bot. The scoreboard is created using two progress bars. User score is the user progress bar. We see that it goes from 0 to 50. Bar style success is what makes the user progress bar green. And bar style danger is what makes the box progress bar red. The progress bars are put inside a V-box called scoreboard so that they appear on the screen vertically. The last widget we need 
is the game over message that appears when the game is finished. This message will display either you win or you lose depending on how the game goes. We use HTML to make the message you win in green color. I'll show later how we can change this message to you lose. Now just like in the apps tutorial, the next step is to put all of the widgets that form the mind reader game into one box. We'll call this box game box. We put the scoreboard and the final message on one row using an H box. We then put the buttons underneath the scoreboard by using a V box. We see that this simple layout actually looks pretty good. All right, well now the only thing left to do is to work on the function update game, which is what will control our entire mind reader video game. So let's think about what this function actually does. After the user makes a choice, either zero or one, the bot will make its choice using AI. To do this, it will use the user's previous moves. We'll store these moves in a variable called user history. So let's try creating this user history variable right now. To store all of the user's previous moves under one variable, we'll use a Python data type called a list. To create a list, we can write code that looks like this. When we run user history, we see that it is currently an empty list. We can add ones or zeros to the list using the append function. Now, when we rerun user history, we see that it contains a one. When we append a zero to user history and run it again, we see that user history now contains a one and a zero. So how does our bot actually use the user's history to predict their next move? Well, to answer this in a really simple way, let's use probability. So, so far in the user's history, we see that they've chosen one once and that they've chosen zero once. So what this means is that 50% of the time they've chosen one. So what if instead the user had actually chosen one, zero, and one again? Well, then we would say that the probability that they choose one is equal to two over three because we see that they chose one twice out of the three times that they move. So then, if we wanted to predict the user's next move, we could take a coin and flip it. And the coin could come up one with probability two thirds and come up zero with probability one third. So let's say we want to continue this every single time that the user moves. So then how do we calculate the probability? Well, the number on top is just the number of times that we see one, and the number on the bottom is the total number of moves that the user has made. And that's it. We now have an idea of how we're going to build the AI algorithm for our bot. Now, the only thing we have to do is turn that into code. So to get the total number of ones inside user history, we're going to use the sum function. This function sums up all the numbers in user history, which in this case tells us how many ones there are. Next, we use the lane function to see the length of the number of numbers inside user history. Dividing the first number by the second number gives us our probability. We now run the following line of code to get the computer's choice. This numpy function basically flips a coin one time. The coin will come up with a value 1 using the probability that we calculated before. So we see that the current output is 0. But if we run this over and over again, we'll see that the value changes each time. Okay, now that we know how the computer will get its choice, let's add this code to our update function. Now that the bot has made its choice, we'll update the user's history with their current move that they made. Okay, so the hard part of updating the game is over. Now we're going to move the progress bar of either the user or the bot, depending on if the bot was able to guess the user's move. So, if the computer's choice was the same as the user's choice, 
then the bot's progress bar will go up by one. Otherwise, the user's progress bar will go up by one. So if we just run the function as it is now, we see that we have a game that we can already kind of play. The only thing left to do in our function is to give the game a way to end. So if you think about it, we made it so that the user and bot progress bars only ever go up to 50. So the game is over if either the user's progress bar reaches 50 or if the bot's progress bar reaches 50. So currently the final message says you win when the game is over. But if the bot reaches 50 first, then the message should instead say you lose in red. Let's make this final message that appears on the screen invisible. Then when the game is over, we make the message visible again to the user. Finally, when the game is over, we don't want to have the user to be able to still click the little buttons that we put on the screen. So what we do is we disable the buttons when someone wins. To do this in the code, we just add two lines at the end, one which disables the zero button and another which disables the one button. And that's it. This is really all of the code that we need for our video game. So we wrote all of our code in this file that we called the mind reader source code, but this looks kind of messy. So let's create another file that the player actually goes to to play the game. To do this, inside the mind reader folder, create a new Python 3 notebook. We're going to rename this notebook Welcome to Mind Reader. Let's give this notebook a pretty title. We'll also add a little description about how to play the game. To make the description look a little prettier, we can press Shift S to split the cell size. And then all we have to do to run the source code is just type run embed.ipynb. But notice when we run this, it looks like nothing is actually happening. So what's actually going on here? Because we see all of the code in the file right here. Well, in order for the mind reader game to appear inside another file, we need to use the display function to display it. So the very last line of code is to display the mind reader game box. Now, when we go back to the mind reader file and we run the application, we see our game. And then we also see that we're able to actually play it against the bot. So that's it. You just built a machine learning video game totally from scratch. So now let's say you want to publish this video game so that anyone else in the world can play it. Well, for that, go inside of apps and open the IO Online application. As usual, we run the application by clicking the web button. Now, when we open manage files, we'll see that we can add the mind reader game. When we click add, we're uploading our video game to the rest of the world. Now, when anybody else goes to the IO newsroom, they'll see your video game right there. If they want to play your video game, they can click the download button. Then when they go to their home page and then go to their downloads folder, they'll see your video game right there. They can open the Welcome to Mind Reader file. And then when they click web, they'll be able to play your video game instantly. So now you know how to build a video game and share it with the rest of the world. Okay, so this tutorial covered an insane amount of knowledge. When you watch this video again, make sure that you're actually typing the code in each step. Also, if you see something you don't understand, make sure you look it up online. For instance, if you don't know what if statements are, check out Socratica's video on the topic. And if you want to learn more about the binomial distribution that was used in the AI algorithm, look it up on Wikipedia or read the NumPy documentation on it. And finally, the best way to learn how to code is practice. 
go through these exercises. Even if you're not able to solve them, just trying will make you way better at coding. All right, that's it for this video. I'm really excited to see what video games you guys will come up with on IO Online. Let me know in the comments what other topics you'd like to see in the videos. Also, if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like and subscribe button. This is Elliot the iPad Pro. See you guys next video.